What's up, Blue Tube? It's your boy, the Blu ray Bandit, back once again with another eBay Blu ray unboxing. This box has 10 Criterion Blu ray titles in it. It's coming to us all the way from Walnut Creek, California to Orlando, Florida. Let's see what's inside. First up, we've got Red Shoes from 1948, a film by Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger, a movie uh, I've heard of but know very little about. And I, I honestly, I don't know much, if anything at all, about the Red Shoes. According to the back, it is cinema's quintessential backstage drama. This is one that I didn't have in my collection, so this is definitely a keeper for me. There's the disc, and here's the booklet. The booklet looks like it has a little bit of damage right here in the upper corners. You can kind of see it right there. Overall, not bad. I'm not often going to be looking at the booklet anyway. Again, a movie I've heard of but haven't seen, and I'm looking forward to checking it out. Next up is Wings of Desire a film by Wim Wenders from 1987, another movie I have not seen. Actually, out of the 10 titles in this haul, I've only seen three of them. So a good deal of blind buys for me, including Wings of Desire, another movie I don't have any idea what it is about. According to the back, it's one of cinema's loveliest city symphonies, whatever the heck that means. I should say as I'm opening this up that I appreciate you for watching this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Despite me doing my darndest to kill this channel by never uploading videos, it continues to grow and we're about 70 away from 2000 subscribers. So if you had ever told me that this many people would want to watch videos of me opening up Blu-rays that I recently purchased, I would have called you insane for sure. But I appreciate every one of you. And again, if you haven't yet, click that subscribe button. Wings of Desire, I already have in the collection, so I'm going to resell this copy to help pay for other titles in this haul I'd rather keep. Next up, another title I already own. This is Naked Lunch, a film by David Cronenberg, Exterminate All Rational Thought. Interesting. Haven't seen this one either. This one's from 1991. I love David Cronenberg. I don't know why I haven't seen this yet, but uh, it's definitely on my list. Now that I own it, I can check that box off. The description says it's about a part-time exterminator and a full-time drug addict named Bill Lee who plunges into the nightmarish interzone, another world of sinister cabals and giant talking bugs. Sounds pretty awesome. I can't wait to dive into this one. Well, I say I can't wait, but I already own this. It's already sitting on the shelf. It's probably been there for about a year and I still haven't watched it yet. So I say I can't wait, but the, there's just so much to watch. And for some reason, Naked Lunch just hasn't hit the top of the list quite yet. Either way, I'm excited to own it, if not watch it someday. Uh, I'm not going to be watching this copy, though, because like I said, I already have one. So this one's getting resold to help pay for some of the titles in this haul I plan on keeping. All right, here's a title I plan on keeping and a title I've already seen and love. This is Time Bandits, a film by Terry Gilliam. This one with the rare Criterion slipcover, this one lenticular slipcover. I don't know if you can see it move a little bit there as I rotate it, but it's it's definitely a subtle movement for sure compared to some other lenticulars I've seen. But yeah, I mean, I, I wish Criterion titles came with slipcovers more often. This one's actually quite a beautiful slipcover. There's the Blu-ray itself. This is quite a wild movie. It's been a bit since I've seen it. It was released in 1981, as I said, directed by Terry Gilliam who directed and was a part of the Monty Python comedy collective. I don't know what you want to call Monty Python. <laughs> Just a group of guys who did comedy together. It's a fantasy film, if you couldn't tell from the covers. I'm sure a good deal of you have seen it, but those of you who have not, you should definitely check it out. The booklet itself is interesting. It presents more as kind of like a poster. There's the inside and there's the outside. Maybe a cross between a poster and a map of some sort. Yeah, Time Bandits, definitely an 80s classic, one that I've seen a couple times but haven't seen in quite a while. So I'm excited to add it to the collection and give it a rewatch at some point. 
Here is another keeper and another blind buy for me, meaning I have never seen Akira Kurosawa's Dreams from 1990. Not only have I not seen it, I have no clue what this is about. Let's take a look. Unfolding in a series of eight mythic vignettes, this late work by Akira Kurosawa was inspired by the beloved director's own nighttime visions, along with stories from Japanese folklore. Interesting. So he had some dreams, wrote them down and then made them into a film. That's that's wild. When people talk about Akira Kurosawa, this is not one that tends to come up, at least not within my circles. So I'm curious to see just what it is eventually when I get to watch it. I don't know. I, this, this one isn't high on the priority list either, just because uh, there are definitely other Akira Kurosawa movies that I have not seen yet that uh, have been recommended to me. This one, I, I'm not sure I even know anybody that's seen this before. But beyond all that, it's a Criterion Collection Blu-ray that I didn't have in my collection, therefore it's a keeper. Next up is Mulholland Drive by David Lynch, a pretty well-known art housey type movie from 2001, one I've seen before. This one comes in the somewhat rare kind of digipack packaging from Criterion. As somebody who likes my shelves to be kind of clean and uniform, I don't particularly love these digipack sets. Not only do they just kind of look awkward next to the standard Criterion Blu-rays, but also they tend to get damaged much more easily. Like if you look at the corners of this title, you can see right there, since it's a black packaging, the pretty light shelfware tends to show through real well. You can kind of also see it on this edge where the colors have just kind of scratched off. There's the other corners. This one's not in particularly bad condition. It's just when it sits on the shelf and gets shuffled back and forth, they're naturally going to get that kind of wear. That doesn't really happen with the clear plastic cases. So let's take a look at what's inside the Mulholland Drive Criterion Blu-ray. Not much, but some big old color photos on the inside. There's the disc. Pretty much your standard Criterion Collection booklet, but pretty well done. It's definitely a strange movie for sure. Most David Lynch films are. Mulholland Drive happens to be one of my favorites. I already own this exact copy, so this one's going up for resale. Next up, we've got another digi book. This is The Princess Bride from 1987, kind of packaged to kind of look like a storybook. It's got kind of this special canvas material and special printing on the cover. It's not your standard insert, which I think is actually pretty suitable for this film. Again, it's an odd looking presentation on the shelf next to all your standard Criterion Blu-rays. I don't particularly love that. Like, I, I wish the height was exactly the same height as the other Blu-rays in the collection. But I mean, what can I say? They tried to do something special. And in this case, I mean, it kind of works on the back. I don't know if it comes like this, but it looks like somebody has saved the special feature features on the back. They decided not to take it off, which I appreciate. There's not a whole lot to say about The Princess Bride. You got the booklet kind of bound into the package itself, which is a little different than most Criterions. There's your disc. I know there's a 4K of this available now as well. I'm looking to upgrade this copy eventually. And speaking of copies, I already have one of these on my shelf. So this one's going up for resale as well. And finally, we have a trilogy box set. This is the Marseille trilogy. I don't know how to speak French. I'm probably butchering that. I have no idea how you pronounce that, but I'm going to just say Marse Marseille trilogy. Evidently, the films are Marius, Fanny, and Caesar, or Cesar, maybe. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, on the back, uh, I should say I don't know anything about this for sure. So let's uh, let's discover it together. In the 1930s, Marcel, a leading light of the Paris theater, set out for New Horizons as a filmmaker in his native province. His early masterpieces, Marius, Fanny, and Cesar, mix theatrical stagecraft with realistic location photography to create an epic love story from the fabric of of everyday life. All right. Sounds interesting. I have no idea when I will ever watch these. I mean, they sound very old and uh, very artsy. I wonder how long each one is. Well, that one says 127 minutes for Fanny, 141 minutes. Uh, so they're long. They're not exactly short movies despite their age. And this one, 127 minutes. I wonder if you're supposed to watch them in order, if it's supposed to go Marius, Fanny, and Cesar. Oh, probably by year. So probably watch 
Marius first, and then Fanny from 1932, and then uh, Cesar from 1936. This one also comes with a nice fat book. Has anybody ever seen this? Like, should I prioritize watching this? I don't know. I don't particularly love old movies, but I found that when it comes to old black and whites, the foreign films seem to do better than the domestically produced films of that time. They just seem a little more experimental and interesting and less showbiz, if that makes any sense at all. But yeah, I didn't have the Marseille trilogy on my shelf, so this one's getting added to my personal Criterion Collection collection. So there we go. That's it for this Criterion Collection Blu-ray haul. There are 10 titles here at a cost of $99.83. That's a per title average of $9.98 each and an estimated value of $138. Death cannot stop true love. All it can do is delay it for a while. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Until then, goodbye.